Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And watch this. Ow, 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 magic, ow, magic hurts. <laughs> did I do it? Did I, did it work? <laughs> I hope so. It's been a long time in the coming. As you can tell, hey, look, we're in color. Finally. Those of you who have been to our tumblers or have met us in person and gotten one of our cards have already seen these color schemes, but it was a little more work to get them animated. Yeah, I had to do a lot of tweaking and magic hurts. But at least we made it in time for the last season of this generation. Mm-hmm. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 9, Episodes 1 and 2. The beginning of the end. I'm a verb? <laughs> oh, poor Twilight. Last season we find out during the Hearthswarming special that your family refers to your neuroses as going Twily Nanas. And now your friends have uh, made you a verb. Though, kind of having all of that thrust onto you is kind of a big thing. Like, yeah. Next week, you're going to be princess. No, scratch that. You're going to be queen. What now? <laughs> yeah, that was very, very mean of Celestia and Luna. And Celestia knows Twilight well enough to know better than to do that. I kept waiting for that to be a huge joke. And then later on, when things were falling apart and Sombra destroyed the tree, I was waiting for that to be Twilight in Sombra's fear spell. Hmm. From what I can tell, they're trying to get rid of a lot of their MacGuffins. All the... Basically, they're going to try to get rid of as many writing problems that they've caused as possible in this last season. Yeah, but destroying the tree is kind of a big thing. Because just last season, we personified the tree and had it acting independently on multiple occasions. So now it's not we destroyed the tree, it's we killed the tree. Well, just like the library. Uh, I'm referring to the original library tree that was destroyed. Season, season four? Ah, uh, but it wasn't sentient as far as we knew. I know, but I'm just tree, tree. Yeah. Another tree that was important to the fandom. Mm-hmm. So we'll see, because I don't buy into the Tree of Harmony and the elements being permanently destroyed. Also a new Gen 1 villain? Yes, yes. As soon as he came on screen, I went, he's missing his bell. <laughs> that was my first thought. I barely remember that arc from Gen 1, but that was my first thought. What was the arc in Gen 1? It was very similar to what he summarized. His bell was a thing of power. There was another bell that would, like, banish him, and he wanted there to be no ponies. Also, how likely is it for Tyrik, Chrysalis, and the Sugar Plum Fairy, also known as Cozy Glow, <laughs> how long do you think they're actually going to stay working for Goatman? The entire setup is now for those three to be the bumbling underlings that constantly ruin the lead villain's plans. They're set up to be murky and lurky because so far, we haven't seen Groger's donkey underling slash jester. So is he going to be around? Also, I would still like to see Corp Scorpan since we're going back to Gem 1 again. Possible he could be what wraps up the whole thing or who uh, helps with Tyrek. Because Scorpan and Tyrek go together. And Sombra finally gets more than three lines. So, speaking of Sombra, what do you think of his new voice? Sounds pretty menacing, but he also sounds very generic, overconfident villain. And not as gravelly or crystals as he was before. But we barely saw him before. He wasn't even, like, fully formed. So you could put the voice differences down to him being fully uh, recharged, as it were. Yeah, I like how some people say like so he brought him back to life why didn't he bring him back again he wasn't dead last time also grogar said very clearly if you fail that's it bye-bye 
why bother to bring him back when you said that in front of the other people that you're making your underlings? Also, there's a, there's a small animation touch that you can only notice if you slow it down a little bit when Sombra is being destroyed. He really gets destroyed. He, he like gets disintegrated. You actually see his skin peel off and they went into details. You're like, this is a kid show. Technically. <laughs> I think they did it this time because they were like, yeah, he's dead now, guys. He, we really killed him this time. <laughs> So unlike most other times where we use the elements of harmony, which either imprison or purify, there is nothing left because we're asserting that he was pure evil. So therefore, when the elements of harmony that weren't actually there, but we still got the same effects without them, went off, there was nothing left. Not just that they probably didn't want anyone going, well, his horn's still alive. I also love how people are saying this is a retcon because it contradicts the comics and new. The comics are only canon until the main show says no. The moment the main show says no, the comic becomes non-canon. That's kind of how they were designed to work. So calm down, every pony. Yeah, so I'm like, it's not a retcon. Straining armor and cadence are retcons. Completely and utterly. But they're awesome retcons. Yes. Also, Flurry Hearts and Alicorn who I think is more powerful than her mother. Cadence is an alicorn. I'm sorry. I'm with Cadence. Just blast Sombra when he's right there in the nursery. Flurry would have helped. <laughs> Shining armor holds her back. Maybe he was more afraid of like possibly hitting Flurry Heart. Possibly hitting Flurry Heart or that Sombra's reactions were faster because usually that's the hero thing. Once the villain has a hostage, you're done. Though I do like how Shining Armor was able to turn the words around doing the, uh, what is it, something irony? Cruel irony? Yes. The, oh, it's funny how you think that's going to work. <laughs> uh, and then I remembered a great movie. Emperor's New Groove. You turned that back on him. It's called Cruel Irony. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm talking to a wall named Crunk. <laughs> and I never liked your spinach puffs. <gasps> Okay, back to ponies. Yes. So what did you think of the pacing of these two episodes? I thought it was real quick. It felt extremely fast. I'm hoping that they were doing that deliberately to try and get us caught up in Twilight's emotions of being overwhelmed and too much is happening at once and I can't deal. Because otherwise then they're just rushing the last season, which is not something you should do with something this popular. They definitely put a lot into this first two episodes though there is a lot of apparently there's a term i don't know if i'm going to use it right or if i have the right definition in my head but it's called lamp shading where they basically make fun of themselves using meta knowledge like how rainbow dash goes you do realize that the princes have done nothing right uh shouldn't we ask for help why we're the ones who do everything also discord's commentary for most of the two episodes with the exception of his little fake speech I really enjoyed that he was able to stand in for the fans and the audience and be like, come on. This is so predictable. You do, come on. Also, there's a moment in the background where Discord's in the background where Celestia and Luna are saying something to Twilight. He just jaw drops like, really? You said that to her? Oh my, you know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because the Lord of Chaos apparently has <laughs> a lot of uh, insight. So I, I like this one theory I saw in some of the other reviews I watched that Discord was actually prepared to take a hit when he dove in front of Fluttershy and he didn't know if he would actually take damage or not. But then he realized, oh, well, that did nothing. I'm still going to play this up. Because, yes, I could save them, but it's going to be better for them if they can save themselves. You know, if it fails, I can always miraculously come back because they're them getting harmed is motivating me to fight past my own weakness i also like how he's like but we have a perfectly good speech walks out the window <laughs> which if i remember correctly is several stories up above a cliff he has wings yeah but he's also discord so air, air gravity those things do not apply just like for his final comment at the end of the episode, instead of coming back in, he just puts himself into the stained glass. That was also a nice callback to uh, season two, I believe. That's when he was first introduced. Mm -hmm. He was the season two opener. Though what also 
is like interesting to me. I don't know if they're going to actually do it during the season or not. Will there be a time where Goatman tries to recruit Discord? It's possible. I was also wondering when they all walked in together against Sombra, if Discord was going to flip, if Grogar had already contacted him. And this was a setup of him walking the main six into a trap. Mm. I'm pretty sure that Discord is finally well entrenched enough to not flip. And if Grogar has been watching them all, all of this time, like he said, if he doesn't think that Discord can be flipped, he won't bother. But it is an interesting thing. I think the one thing that will prevent Discord from flipping is Fluttershy. Of course. But I don't think that will prevent him from pretending to flip. Oh no, nothing will prevent him from pretending to flip. He's Discord. If flipping will be fun and chaotic, he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. Or an advantage for him to uh, get into that guy's good graces to be close enough to do something else entirely. Yes. Because I have a feeling Discord's a little bit more cautious, especially if he finds out Tyrek's involved. Because Tyrek was the one time that Discord became powerless. So it's definitely going to be interesting. Quite. I also find it interesting that Cozy Glow, despite being a pony and technically magicless, and even though she was our main villain other than Naysay last season, is villainous enough that Grogar still recruits her. Well, she's definitely really intelligent. She's very intelligent. She's definitely evil, but... I just find it interesting because she is pony and Gogar has always been strictly anti-pony. And before the ravening mob comes in and goes, what about Sombra? Sombra looks pony, but he seems slightly off. So I don't think he's pure pony. Green eyes, red horn. Yeah. A different shaped horn, curved, more like mist manes, but he doesn't look like any of body type. He doesn't look like any of the ponies from Miss Main's story. Moving over to a different thing uh, from the bad guys, I wonder if we'll get to see any more like Saddle Arabians or creatures from outside coming in and interacting with the group. It would be nice because I would hate for, oh, yeah, we had all these creatures just for one season because school. And speaking of the school... Will we see the student six? Depends on the time frame of the season and where the villains go. Because if all of this happens during summer break, no students. If it continues on into the school year, we should be seeing students. Also, if the villains attack different areas, we should see students. Also, in case anyone's wondering, no, we have not looked at anything including the titles of the episodes that were leaked. So yeah, we have no idea the titles of episodes or any hints beyond this point. Just in case everyone's going, why don't they know about that? It's because we actually do not know. I don't like spoilers and do my best to avoid such things. It's one of the reasons I'm not on Equestria Daily very often, unless it's the off-season. Because as we've stated before on lots of our other podcasts... She could get a hint from a single word in the title, and she'd be like, this is what the episode's going to be about. I'm like, how do you? Oh, my God. <laughs> and speaking of which, based on these first two episodes, where do you think things are going? Well, the fandom wants Chrysalis to be the final big bad. So the first main thing is, how well is Grogar going to maintain his dominance over these other villains? Because these villains are not used to taking orders from others, and they are not used to working together with anyone. So are they going to turn around and be like the mean six and a bunch of infighting and try to overthrow him and each go their own separate ways? Or are they actually going to try and work together? Because three versus one theoretically in their favor, especially if most of the magic is in what remains of his collar. Steal or destroy that and maybe you're back in the game or manage to find or reconstruct the bell and use it. Hmm. So I forget now whether they said it was stolen or destroyed. I don't remember either. But speaking of Chrysalis, she, she's loopy. She's crazy now. I mean, she was nuts before, but now she is totally nuts. She carved out 
Changelings. Onto those logs. I'm waiting for, like, the Everfree Forest to do something with those. Because it was bits of wood with hair that got her the mean six. Though that reminded, the mean six reminded me of the Tree of Harmony. And then it reminded me of how Samba destroyed it. And I'm like, how did he follow them back? Yeah, so one, how did he follow them back? Two, why didn't the tree defend itself? We've seen the tree defend itself before. And it already had the elements returned to it. So the tree was as strong as it ever would be. I guess that lends more credence to your theory that it actually isn't destroyed. Even though the forest itself kind of started going nuts. Which lends more credence to the tree being destroyed. Also, how did Star World, Celestia, and Luna, like, did they, like, put a spell over the forest to prevent it from going crazy after this? Or did they just fight it back and our, at least Star Sword is still fighting it back? Because that seems a little um, labor intensive. Also, I would think the two natural born alicorns who raise the sun and the moon and watch over Equestria waking and sleeping would have been a better choice to go beat up Sombra. Just a little. So I guess they wanted Celestia and Luna to do something outside other than just the standard where are they <laughs> well it was nice to see them show up and do something because even in the season eight finale they were coming ready to do battle but everyone else already won everyone else being the student six that time you know but there's a great deal of governance that is done by celestia so yeah the main six does all of the fighting and hero stuff you really want to tell me that they're going to have time to do all of the fighting and the hero stuff and handle all the actual governance. Especially since you have a, a thousand plus years of experience, Celestia. You are like literally the best candidate for the job. I was really expecting you guys to say you were going on vacation, not retirement. You know, leave like Twilight and her friends in charge for a week and then come back. That would have been much more reasonable. Though there's this story that Lauren eventually wanted Twilight to take over Celestia's position in the original Bible. Well, everything kind of points to it. Back when they had to try and cram it all in just to three seasons with season three being shortened, Twilight has been Celestia's favored pupil and Celestia spent a lot of time grooming her, which all makes sense to eventually have her take over. Celestia's position but with the way Twilight has developed over the seasons yeah throwing it at her like that not good also considering the retcon with Cadence so yeah Twilight's not the first ascended alicorn so how does she feel getting passed over for her younger sister-in-law well Technically, she's already ruling a kingdom of her own. Twilight technically isn't ruling a kingdom. She's ruling a small rural town in the middle of nowhere. Well, she's not even ruling that. They still have a mayor. She's the princess of friendship. And that was a lot of season four, that she was a princess. But what was she really doing? Though so speaking of Celestia reminded me of something I would like to see again in uh, this last season. Philomena! We have not seen Philomena in a long time, and it would be nice. It would also be nice to see Pee-wee. Because, mm -hmm. we've, you know, we've seen other phoenixes, you know, Pee-wee being one, but Philomena! That would be awesome for her to show up again, just for something. Even, like, during the final battle, phoenixes attack. Because, seriously, it's a bird, and it's on fire. And they are basically immortal. You kill one, it turns to ash, comes back. Yeah, so, come on. Speaking of characters we'd like to come back, name a couple of ones you'd like to see back from previous seasons. Well, I'd like to see the rest of the Pillars come back because, okay, if Everfree needs to be put back under control, we could probably use a couple more Pillars. And, I mean, I don't think Rockhoof got very far away considering his official title is now Storyteller and Historian. So I can't imagine he's gone too very far unless he's a traveling storyteller. But in addition to the pillars, what's the real name of the Pony of Shadows? I can't remember. I, I want to say Gideon, and I know that I don't think that's right. So anyways, the one who was not technically a pillar, but handled all their strategy. 
because we could probably use a really good strategist this season. Just a little. Just a lot, because <laughs> Grogar's been planning his revenge for quite some time. It's going to be interesting. Like, are we going to like be seeing glimpses of the group of villains throughout the season doing stuff in the background? As in actually them doing stuff in the background that we know about, not just... We think that Starlight Glimmer in the background there with the menu up, or, hmm. Yeah, things a little more obvious to the audience. Also, when they kept cutting back to Grogar's lair, I kept going, Meanwhile, at the Legion of Doom. <laughs> I think that's like their official fan name right now. Probably. I have a feeling they're going to be about as effective. <laughs> uh... Yeah, we're, we're talking about the cheesy. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because the actual ones in the comics are a little bit more nasty, but we're talking about, an, uh, what was it, 70s? Cartoon, si 60s yeah. cartoon show? Mm hmm Wow, I'm just remembering all the funny transitions. God, I watched a lot of that show. No, I am not that old. It was on in syndication. It was on every morning before school. I watched that. Because it was on. Back before the days of more widespread internet, we had to settle for television. Mm-hmm. And we had to schedule our time watching it. We couldn't schedule a recording unless we had a VCR and knew how to work the thing. I do. And if our parents weren't recording something at the exact same time. I was lucky most of the stuff I wanted to watch was definitely not in the prime time. Usually it was like really early in the morning, just before school, or late at night because we had satellite and there was this one channel where you could change to it, and it was like the what the other channels actually used to get their stuff. So cartoons and stuff would broadcast at, that at specific times for these other networks to record and save to their stuff. I think they were called feed channels or something like that. And... There were usually title cards before um, the thing came up saying, like, this is episode three of this, and this is when it's supposed to air, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I would set up VCR to record that off the satellite. I also watched a lot of anime that way. Back when the only animes on were Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Sailor Moon. Oh, I watched that. I usually record, I don't know if it was on in the morning, but I know it was on in an awkward time that I had to set up a VCR to record. Of course, and then there was the whole explosion, and we got a million shows, but we're supposed to be talking about ponies, which are not anime. Nope, but some stuff was inspired by. Mm-hmm. Let's see. I don't remember there. There, there was no musical numbers in this. Um, in these two episodes. No, no, there, there wasn't really time for a musical number. I was thinking, like, um, you know going back to the pacing again but the pacing i was like are they really going to defeat somber in this first episode and then we're going to do something else oh no we're doing somber twice okay that works for me because it seemed like really quick to defeat him i mean not that he put up that much of a fight the first time but he you know made a little more progress this time crystal heart destroyed the elements of harmony which how just so many questions because they managed to pull off the same magical MacGuffin elements of harmony type attack without the elements of harmony. So apparently you got rid of your MacGuffin, but you still have the power from the MacGuffin. So what's the point of getting rid of the MacGuffin? Well, it is the magic of friendship. Yeah, they're going to drag that one to the ground. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's going to be the most overused phrase of the season. Though it's going to be real interesting because his plan is to basically drive wedges in the main six friendship. So his goal is to destroy their friendship and to have the villains working together. And I'm like, okay, are we actually going to redeem Chrysalis? And are we going to redeem her by having her make friends with the other villains? <laughs> uh, though, it just popped into my head how they could use Chrysalis to help drive a wedge. You know, she's a changeling. Yeah, duh. But are they going to use that? We don't know. It's a way to do it, and it's one of the easier ways to do it. Because, I mean, we basically did that last season with the mean six. 
but you would think Chrysalis would be better at it considering how long she masqueraded as Princess Cadence. I wouldn't really call that masquerading. She didn't really pretend too much to be Cadence. She was way too mean a lot of the time. But yeah, she was definitely, she definitely looked like her. Another thing is like, in her mental state, could she actually pull that off? Probably not, but she could take it a whole nother route. Impersonating someone and being all crazy. They're concerned for that pony's sanity. Mm. And they're spending all their time being worried and distracted and trying to cure her. Going to be interesting. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff. I think this is another full season, so I think we're actually going to get 26 episodes for this last season. Oh, that's an interesting thought. Okay, the Table Tree Castle map reacts to friendship problems. Do the villains get cozy enough to qualify? And that's how the main six finds them. Wow. Wow. That kind of... That, that makes my head hurt. Yeah, but that's the thing I was like, wait a minute, wouldn't the Table Tree Castle map help out? Like, no, that only works with friendship problems. So unless the villains are having friendship problems. Ooh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, the final two episodes. The castle map is telling us to go here. Wait a minute, Chrysalis? Cozy Glow? Tyrick? But stamps are glowing. This must be the spot. Okay, whose friendships did you guys ruin? <laughs> we can't, we don't have the time to ruin other people's friendships. We're just arguing. Like, oh, shoot, that's... Okay. <laughs> uh, guys, how do you feel about having our hip tattoos glow like this for the rest of our lives? Because I'm, I'm all for walking out. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a nice vibration, too. It's just... it's. It's just going to sit there. I'm just going to not. I'm going to ignore I, it. I am not answering this page. <laughs> <laughs> the world is. Nope. Not answering that. <laughs> God. For those kids out there, there was this thing back in the 90s called a pager. <laughs> this was before cell phones. And it used. I don't know what kind of network it used, but it was able to receive short text messages that you couldn't reply to but they were something like call this number now or we need you at the hospital then you have to go find something that's you can see around sometimes called a payphone put money in that and call sometimes you'd have a special card that you can dial a number on the back and use the payphones that way there's also this thing called calling collect which is one of the reasons 800 numbers were a thing, because long distance calls used to actually cost more money. They weren't free or just part of the plan. I remember when it would actually cost more money to call other cell phone networks. Are we done dating ourselves? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, there's a lot of different ways that this could go. And because we've only watched the pilot and it's the last season, so we kind of figure anything goes, we're throwing it all out there. Gonna be so much fun. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 9, Episodes 1 and 2, The Beginning of the End. Commentary now brought to you in dazzling lux color. <laughs> Yay! Hey, outro. So, short version. Links to art. Like, subscribe, comment, share, watch other videos. Lux has a Patreon. Lux has a coffee. We both have Tumblr. We also put referral links around. We also do non-pony stuff, which, you know, is also other pop culture shows, but also Ember's Reading Room. Yes, I'm still reading children's books. I don't care. It's fun. We watch a children's show and we read children's books. Yeah. Thanks again for listening. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. 
but all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.